Hey everybody, welcome. Um, just want to lay lay a foundation here. I'm going to use a little scripture, but we're going to talk about false prophets and false anointed. Okay, and I think it's important to understand that when Yeshua When Yeshua comes, you know, it will be after false prophets and false messiahs. And those false prophets and false messiahs will have the power to, to do supernatural events, okay? And so, if we look at, if we look at the scripture... Using our e-sword, we type in false prophets. <clears throat> Go to Matthew 24, 24. But pray ye your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. Okay, and when is great tribulation? When you see the, when you therefore... See the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to his clothes. Basically, <clears throat> you're to get out of there. Get out of Dodge. Okay? And woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Look at look at Joel. Uh, I believe it's Joel talking about the armies that would just, just destroy, killing babies, ripping babies out of their mother's womb. It's sick. It's a sick description, but I didn't write it. Um. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. Okay, and except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Okay, this is key right here. Um, you see the abomination which maketh desolation standing up. Okay, we see an image of the beast. We see the gods with us. We see angels with us. Okay, uh, it's the son of Jesus, son of Mary, maybe, Quetzalcoatl, uh, the return of Zeus, return of uh, Buddha. All these things are possibilities. <laughs> okay, Maitreya, all this nonsense. Okay, all these different names for fallen angels. Okay, you want to know the names of the fallen angels? Go read the book of Enoch. Okay, I'll send you a free copy of the Book of Enoch, if uh, free PDF, if you if you give me your email. Okay, so so basically this destruction, great tribulation, says it was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. Okay, you can imagine this devastation. It's three days of darkness, with earthquakes, tidal waves, tsunamis, uh, asteroids. All these, all these things are possibilities, okay? It's happened before, it can happen again. And in this description, it, it would happen is so severe that, like, you can't even describe it. So you can imagine a world in the aftermath that is totally dependent on the local hierarchy of, of things, I guess. You know, what's left, this infrastructure, any infrastructure. So... You can conceive, you can perceive that gods would come down, no electricity, all these things. What do we do? Everybody's huddling, and then they say, Come, he's in the inner chamber, come see him, kind of 
kind of thing. But but who are? What is this? Why would they be geographically? You know, if if this if this is saying he is in the desert, go not forth. He's in the secret chambers, believe it not, because there's multiple. They will be pretending in the ge geography by geography, geographic region by geographic region, because everybody be like, there will be no internet, possibly, there'll be no communications, so you would have to trust word of mouth, and they will say, hey, he's over here. That's what this means to me, okay? So, so what am I saying? What I'm saying is, <clears throat> if, if the world has one story, because it does, and that story is based on prophecy. I mean, there has been prophecy for every culture isolated through time. God has delivered His prophecy to us through the Holy Bible, through the prophets, through Yeshua Himself, through the Holy Spirit, in the last days, through individuals confirming the prophecies. Um, but the world has also received prophetic visions because, see, it is the world that will be confused, okay? A true Christianity will not be confused if it were possible, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, but it is not possible. We are preparing for these scenarios in our mind to understand that as long as we're in a flesh body, as long as we're in an organic body, not in a twinkling of an eye transfigured into a being of light upon the arrival of Yeshua, it's not real. Whatever they say, it's not real, and you need to be willing to go to your death before you believe what they tell you. Okay? Your first death. Okay? Not the death of your supernatural body that has been transfigured out of this organic um, configuration of electromagnetic charges. Okay? So now, who, what, who are these false Christs and these false prophets? These are fallen angels perpetrating, okay? And what is the Mayan 2012 about? It's about the return of the nine, the Bolon Yokte Ku, Bolon Yokte, and his, his, his gods returning, okay? I'll put a little Ancient Aliens clip up here. I don't know if they'll, you know, it'll be a link to it, so it's not like I'm doing any copyright infringement so and they don't have it all right because there are scholars that believe there is nine underworld gods support gods returning as well okay and that's that's not mentioned in ancient aliens but uh, I'll show you in this Spanish um, version uh, where you'll read nuevo diez 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 whatever god the word for gods diez Whatever the word is. Nuevo Diedes. That's nine gods, okay? So who are these nine? Well, the Ennead is a Greek term, okay, for the nine deities in the Egyptian. It's a group of nine deities. There were more deities, but this is a group of not the major deities, okay? And the Ennead were worshipped at Heliopolis, okay, in Heliopolis, Helia, the sun, right, city of the sun, sun worshipping, right, okay, it's the one of the oldest cities of ancient Egypt, okay, so from the beginning, these nine deities worshipped in the city of the sun, okay, and check this out, Atum, a male personage, if you see the glyph. Shu, a male personage, if you see the glyph. Nut and Geb. Geb has a serpent head. Nut is a female. So you have three females, three males, one male, so female so far. Osiris, sort of a green guy, like the Indians. You know, they got the green dudes, the blue guys, okay? Um... Isis, a female. S Seth, a male. Seth, he's got uh, like a jackal head. And then Nephthys. Okay, so you have one, two, three women. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight. So they're listing eight in this gallery. So who's the ninth? Okay. The ninth is going to be Ra, I think. But anyway, what, what what I'm trying to tell you is there's there's these nine gods in Egypt. There's these nine gods in the Maya. You have the feathered serpent of the Maya, the eagle and the snake. You see the headdress of Pharaoh that has the, the, the snake and the eagle. And you have a concept that exists that a, there, there was a centralized civilization that was the main civilization where these nine were from and they were worshipped at Heliopolis. They were worshipped in the Maya. And where were they at? They were in Atlantis. Okay, these are their Egyptian manifestations, these Egyptian names. In Maya, we have the Mayan Nine, but really, we, we have the Greek Pantheon, okay? And in the Greek Pantheon, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, you have uh, 12 Olympians, okay? In the Mayan, you have 13 creator gods, okay? But they all have these same nine male and female personages that they refer to, okay? And, and you, can, you can do your own research on this, but what, you, what, what I'm just trying to explain, see, the Roman poet Ennius gives the Roman equivalents as six male-female complements, preserving the play, okay? So you, you see these, you see this idea, oh, what's that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Jupiter, Juno, Jupiter, which is Zeus, let's just go with the Greek name, Zeus, Hera, Poseidon, Demeter, Dionysus, okay, and I think Dionysus was a half-breed. Okay, so he's not necessarily one of the, the, the top ones. Okay, Apollo, another half-breed. So, if you take the half-breeds out, you could quite possibly have nine. But that's, that's scholar research on another level. Don't have time for that. What we're trying to explain is that every ancient civilization has these same male and female god representations. Okay, and the Mayan 2012... In Tortuguero, in Tabasco, Mexico, there's a hieroglyph, and that hieroglyph says, December 21, 2012, in Mayan calendar terminology, the nine will descend, okay, or ascend from the underworld, whichever you want to have it, will, will come from another time and space, and descend, come down to this planet, okay? So what does that mean for Christians? It just means that there could be a day when the whole world will say, we told you so. These nine gods have come down and explained to us the truth that we're all together, we're all brothers, and, and, and we're all gods, and, can, can, and our collective mind is God, but we as gods have the power to create as God. All this crazy New Age stuff is, is not New Age. New Age religion is the oldest religions, okay? Just manifested in some new hip, groovy, try to get laid kind of way, okay? They're not, they're not the, um, the, the people they claim to be, okay? They're just hip and cool in another way, using this ancient, ancient theology to, to create this um, awareness that, you know, the God, our God, the God of Moses, God of Abraham, God of Yeshua, is not the true God, but that we are all God, and that we, it is manifested through time through these personages, all right? So, so you you go to the book of Daniel, okay, we're using our e-sword again, so we go to binoculars, and we're going to search, okay, seed of men. Okay. And in the in the, in the vision Daniel was translating of the dream of the ten the ten toes speaking ten, 
Okay, that's nine plus one, nine support gods and one Bolon Yokte and nine support gods. Okay, the Bolon Yokte Ku. Okay. <laughs> And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Okay, so these ten entities mingle with human beings. Okay, whether it be sexually or whether it be we live amongst you, doesn't matter to me. It is a differentiation between these ten kings... In this seed of men. In this word kings, it's royalty. Okay? So it's not necessarily a masculine thing. Okay? The kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Okay? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. This is the final kingdom on the planet before the return, because we see in the next verse, Daniel 2.44 And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Okay? It's really, really critical that we understand that the world understands its own history outside of the context of the Bible, and that the devil is going to use that understanding of ancient history. This whole ancient alien thing says aliens has primed a whole generation of intellectuals to be open to this idea. Okay, when I was a kid, it was Chariots of the Gods, and Eric Von Daniken is resurrected with ancient aliens, and it's a whole new generation ushering in this idea that we will be visited by the Anunnaki, them who descended from the sky. Okay? So you could see the false prophets and the false Christs. Okay, and you can see the waves of them. And you could even see how this world can be set up here, with these false prophets and these false Christs, and then who comes? Not necessarily Yeshua. Because until we're out of these organic bodies, it's, it's not Yeshua. Okay? Hold on one second. Hey, Steve! Steve! Hold on one second. Hey, Steve! I'm 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 finishing up this little Bible study I'm doing, but if you got a minute, no okay, give me a minute. Yeah, I don't have the the editing capacity to to edit this. This is high definition. It just takes too long. So what I want to read to you is something that if 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 Islam, um, Issa son of Mary comes, and and it destroys an antichrist and destroys these false gods then the world will think oh is islam the truth is this our jesus we need to be prepared for anything so i want to close with this that i had found this in isaiah okay listen to this at the end for behold Yehoah, the Lord, will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Now listen. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind the one in the midst eating swine's flesh, and the abomination, and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord God. And I did a study, and I'm going to go back and find this study. Islam is the mark of the beast. Listen to this, okay? This mouse is Akbar, okay? And it's associated with that unclean thing spoken of. It's only used twice in the whole Bible. But who's associating and purifying themselves in the gardens behind the one in the midst? These are those fallen angels. Now listen. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come, and I will gather all the nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. Okay, now listen. Okay. The abomination, the image of the beast, the, the beast, the mouse, Akbar, okay, shall be consumed together, okay, in the lake of fire, all right? So this is the gods with their godhead coming 
and the world is being prepared by this whole Mayan 2012 to accept that. Whether it happens on that date or not, I don't care. But what they're saying, if it happens, plays right into our prophecies. And this whole battle of good and evil with the Bolan Yachtik who are coming to battle evil, you're not you're going to know who good and evil is because as long as it's not Yahshua coming and in a twinkle of an eye we are transfigured. It's all the devil. Okay? I love you guys. I pray for you guys. I pray for you guys. This is going to get wild over the next few days, Lord willing. So I pray. I just want to set up this foundation, Father, that we, 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 we keep your word first and we hold your word as truth as we walk through these days of confusion, Lord. And we pay for strength and, and, and understanding and wisdom. And we pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen. Peace.